Welcome back to Advent of Code 2021, day number 13. We are past the halfway point. 25 divided by 2 is less than 13. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're coming back around in this cave here quite a bit. Uh, and we're going to see how things go. If you don't know what the heck this video is about, you should read the description below. We're doing this every day. Let's go. Number 13. Hmm? Transparent origami. Reach another volcanically active part of the cave. It would be nice if you could do some kind of thermal imaging so you could tell ahead of time which caves are too hot to safely enter. The submarine seems to be equipped with a thermal camera. When you activate it, you are greeted with, congratulations to your purchase. I can read for a camera image camera preview into the code. Found a page one in the manual. Ah, an old DRM system from the DOS days. <laughs> the Apple II days. Apparently, the elves had never used this feature. To your surprise, you managed to find the manual. As you go open it, page one falls out. It's a large sheet of transparent paper, like tracing paper. Oh, like a plastic sheet of transparent. Okay. It's marked with random dots and includes instructions on how to fold it up. Okay. Uh-huh. In the first section is a list of dots on the transparent paper. Uh, it represents the top left coordinate, the first value X, the second value Y increases downward. So this is zero, zero. And this is, who knows, big number. Okay. Three zero is to the right. Yeah, so this is zero, one, two, three. Right. So X increases to the right. So this is three, zero. Okay. O oh, seven. Well, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Here's O seven. We already know how it is. Cordis example from the following pattern where it is a dot and dot is empty. Cool. Very good. There is a list of fold instructions. Each instruction indicates a line on the transparent paper and wants you to fold the paper up for horizontal Y lines or left for vertical lines. Okay, so if we were gonna fold on say like x equals three, right? Does that mean we fold, does the crease happen here or here or right in the middle? Fold along y7, which designates the line formed by all the positions where y is seven. Fold the bottom half up. So this goes on top of that. This goes on top of that. This, right? And so and this one goes on top of that one. Uh, some of the dots might end up overlapping, but dots still never appear exactly on a fold line. Ah, so, so when you fold on a line, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Well, there's no, there's nothing there, but you you eliminate anything that's when you crease it, you basically blow that line away, right? And then you just boop, 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 right? You basically you're gonna reduce to something that's only half as big, and to figure out the the value of each of the remaining spaces, you just do an uh an or, you do an or between this one and the one that it maps to, right? So if this is true or this is true, then the resulting, right? You're gonna take this and you're gonna make a new one that's just this half, or you could just go through this, iterate through this and or it with each partner uh, spot, right? To figure out if the new one will contain a, a hash or a period, okay? Some of the dots may end up overlapping, but dots will never appear exactly on a fold line. A fold looks like this. Yep. Now only 17 dots are visible. Notice, for example, two dots in the bottom left corner before 
the paper is folded. After the fold is complete, those dots appear at the top left corner. Yep, see these two end up going up there because you or you or this with that. And this one's true. At least one of them is true. Therefore, true. Hmm? Because the paper is transparent, the dot below them and the result remains visible. Yep. Some dots can end up overlapping. In this case, the dots merge together, become a single dot. It's just or. The second is to fold along five. Does five, oh, but look, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Five just has, doesn't have any things on it. You eliminate column five, All right? But anyway, fold left. Yep, sure enough, they made a square. Transparent paper is pretty big. Focus on just completing the first fold. How many dots are visible after completing just the first fold instruction on your transparent paper? Well, hold on a second. We're going to have to perform all the fold instructions for part two. You know it, right? So we're just going to implement the full, the full shimigegi <laughs> um, right from the get-go, and that should give us the answers to part one and part two. We just need to figure out the math for how to map a point to its on the other half. So we need a fold x and a fold y function. Uh-huh. All right. This doesn't seem too bad. So here's our test input. Thirteen. And then here is our real input. And the puzzle was called transparent origami. Cool. Got it? Okay. So the first step is obviously going to be to parse the input like we always do. Uh, and it's we got to construct a grid, right? So actually, the, the parsed input is going to reveal two things. It's going to give us a list of folds and the list of dots, right? So we're going to make a class for the paper. It's going to have two functions, fold fold, you know, what it might have fold y and fold x as two different functions or just a single function, but we're going to need to parse out two different things. So, um, what we're going to want to do for line and in input file dot read, well, I think, can we say while line and in input file dot read is not blank to, and then do it again? While line and input file dot read not equal to uh, just a blank or just a new line. All right, I just want to see what happens with this. Oh. That's uh, that's not gonna work. Um, we need to start. Um, by reading a single line. Right, into the, um, right. I say, okay, well, we didn't get a blank. Uh, 
so then we're going to uh Yeah, we'll print it and then uh, replace it with the next line. Okay, let's. Yep, that worked. See how it stopped. Um, we didn't. We didn't print out any of those instructions. And then down here, watch if we print input file dot read line. You'll see at the very end, it prints the single fold. Uh, so then, for line and input file dot read lines dot. So, uh, so this will get the remaining one, right? So our parsed input is actually going to be equal to a tuple. Uh, we can actually put this down here. Uh, let's do this. Let's do uh, dot locations is going to be a list. Okay, and so when we get a when we get the single line, it's going to be number comma number, right? So you want to do um, int x. Actually, I want to do a tuple, a tuple comprehension in x for x in, I'll do n, number for n in line dot split on the comma. Just in case, we'll put a strip in there. Dot locations dot append. Let's just do actually a breakpoint here. Okay. Um, and then so if we go here, uh, uh, we got, oh, it's a generator. Uh, Let's try again. There we go. Five two seven eight seven two. Is that the first one? It sure is. And what's the last one? You gotta make sure you got them all. Right. Six eight one eight two one. We got them all. Very nice. Okay. Should probably switch to the test input down here. In which case, we should be able to see much more clearly what's happening. Uh-oh. Uh the test input didn't work. It's it's going past the uh, thing. Uh, this one successfully stopped here. This one didn't. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Let 
line. Three zero, we're almost there. Nine zero is the last one. Nine zero, great. So we read, we read in nine zero. We come back to the top. It's not equal to backslash n. Add nine zero to the dot locations. That's been done. And now the next line is backslash n. Go around to the top, all right? Does the line, it should be equal to backslash n, and it exited, fantastic. So now for each line in input file.read.split lines, so actually let's let's check right here. Input fi uh, file.read.split line. So the input file, yeah, okay. Oh. You. Whoop. Hmm? Okay. I guess that I guess that whatever was broken before is not broken now. Cool. Okay. So we're reading that properly. So now uh we want to parse the instructions so we can remove the fold along um, part we might use a regular expression here to extract X or Y and to extract the number I think that's what we'll do okay so let's we can just figure this out entirely within our terminal. All right, so uh, let's get a sample string. Fold along something equals number. Okay. Fold along x equals what is it? Oops, that I overwrote the string. I keep doing that. Uh. Uh, why? Hold along. Okay, import re. All right, dot pattern. Uh, so let's try. It's gonna be fold along. Let's Google again. I always forget the syntax every time. Python regex capture. Just some parentheses. All right. Capture. Yeah. I'd all adverbs. No. All right, I'll try to do it from uh <laughs> so fold along space either an X or a Y, right? Followed by an equal sign, followed by a digit. And that's the end. And that's the start. What? No R8 pattern. What? Regex capture example. Example. Capture. Yep. Oh, re dot compile, and then match. Okay. So 
So pattern dot match our uh, line. Okay, and then pat uh, pattern dot groups two. How did they do it in the example? Oh, dot group with a, oh, match equals, oh. Huh. I guess it wasn't a successful match. Let's use a, a, a online regex tool. Here's one. Your test string is. Boop. Okay, your regular expression. Fold along x or y equals a digit. Dollar. Start. No matches. Okay. Let's do. Let's do this. Uh, one through. Oh, it's that's a single digit, right? Sing uh, digit plus. There we go. We forgot the plus. Uh, match capture. Right. Got the plus after the D. It's only. It's looking for a single digit, and our example had multiple digits. There we go. Not too far off. Got a plus in there. So M group zero is gonna be the whole thing. One and two. Uh oh. Three. Uh oh. Is our parentheses wrong? Oh, parentheses did not include the plus. That's the problem. There we go. So now M group one is X and M group two is one, two, three. Got it. Okay. Uh, pattern equals RA dot compile. Y equal oop, equals XTD plus dollar. Okay, uh, pattern dot uh, match equals pattern dot match line. Oh, so we're going to be this is going to be the, the folds, right? Uh, folds dot append. Gonna be match dot group one comma match dot group two put an int around that one dot locations and folds terrific got no breakpoints left good uh, let's put one here and Okay, so we should look at our dot locations. No, not, no, what? Oh, parsed input. There you go. Oh, so the parsed input set is, is a list, but the <laughs> we'll fix that. But yeah, you can see we got our two folds. Seven, uh, Y7 and X5, there's the two folds, and the data goes from 6, 0 to 9, 0. Well, 6, 10, 6, 10. That's correct. That's correct. Okay, we just had to fix the uh, this return here. Like that. Uh, and we 
got to go down to the parsed input actually, and we want to say that um, dot locations folds like that. Dot locations, good. Folds, good. All right, we have parsed the input successfully. All right. Now let's make a class for our paper. And we're only going to need the dot locations for creating the, the transparent paper. OK. Uh, I guess this the width and height is going to be equal to, we can figure this out from the, the start, it, right? Um, so the maximum of all dot locations, right? So let's do, uh, let's do set dimensions or get dimension, set dimensions. Uh, okay, so for all the locations, we want to find the max X and the max Y. Uh, okay. Max X equal to, right, because we don't know the initial size of our paper. Right. It's not it's not specified. Is there anything here that says anything about it? No, I think it just goes. Are we going to need to know? Are we going to need to know it is the question. Right? So in the example, they're giving you the perfect half split, right? Let's say you did a fold on, on one, right? Let's see, you did a fold on one. And going out to the right, there was just lots and lots of nothing. All right. You don't really care about that. Um, you can just check the locations where you have a dot. Right? And you just need to translate each dot to its new location. Right? So if you're to fold on one, you know, anything that's less than, than one, right? So this used to be zero. You're folding on one. So the new X, right, the translation is gonna be uh it's gonna become in the new one. Uh let's see. The one will be a will be this used to be two. If you fold it over the one, so the difference between two and one is one. Let's see, two becomes zero, right? So anything that's one away from the fold. Oh, it doesn't tell you, I guess it doesn't matter if you're folding, oh no. Fold the bottom half up. 
if you're doing a, you fold it to the right. That's a vertical line fold left. So you take this one and you move it over here. You're folding left. Um, Oh, so anything that's to the left doesn't move. Um, but if this line wasn't right in the middle, if this line was, say, to the right, I guess you only, anything that, so if this line, <laughs> all right, so the line is like way over here. You really only need to consider this column and this column, the ones on either side of the fold, because there is nothing further beyond, right, to, to do any folding. And anything that's over here is going to be untouched, right? Because this, nothing over here is going to touch any of these. So a fold on this vertical here would only affect the final three columns. A fold here, likewise, is still only going to affect the first three columns. However, all of these, while being unaffected, are going to get rotated over, right, um, to the left side of those three columns. Okay. So, let's see. The math on this to figure out the how much x to translate is what we're looking for. So, we want to make a function where the input is uh, a dot location, a fold location, the current uh, set of all locations, uh, well actually the, 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 this could be a set, the set of uh, points, so we can do that first. Right, because we're basically going to be eliminating duplicates, so that's it's using a set is good to start. So that's good. All right, the translation rule. You're only going to be you're not going to be checking y's, just looking at x's, or in this case, or in the vertical case, you're looking at just y's. Right, you never have to look at x and y at the same time, so that's really that's really nice. Um. But it's just how much do you add or subtract from x based on where the fold is. So here it's a fold 5. So this x, you're going to compare. This used to be 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you're going to. Oh, no, it used to be 0, 6. It used to be 0, 6, not 5. 5 was this empty spot. So 0, 6 with a fold along 5. 6 minus 5 is 1. So you subtract 2. You got to do an extra 1. Because you're a limit you, to, to account for the eliminated the eliminated column, seven is two away from five. You do an extra one, so that's seven minus three, six five four. Oh no, times it's the distance times two plus one. So. Or just distance times 2. It was 1 away. Multiply it by 2. You get 2. This one is 2 away. 7 minus 5 is 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. 
All right. 7 minus 4 is 3. 8 was 3 away from 5 times 2. 8 minus 6 is 2. 0, 1, 2. Yep. Okay, so now does that rule work when the... Uh, does that rule work if the um, what was I gonna say? If the if the line isn't in the middle, so if the line is uh, you know, the line is here. Okay, where it's gonna be a fold. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven. So a fold 7, which is totally legal. It's all dots. So 8 minus 7 is 1. 1 times 2, yeah, the 8 folds on to the 6. 9 minus 7 is 2. Times 2 is 4. 9 minus 4 is 5. Yep, the 9 would have folded onto the 5 if the fold was here instead of there. Okay, so it's number that you're at minus the location of the fold times 2. Now, if the line is way over here somewhere, okay, what's going to happen is the, um, right, so this one, you know, let's say you fold here on 1. 2 minus 1 is going to be 1 times 2. So 2 folds on to 0. That's fine. 3 minus 1 is 2 times 2 is 4. That's going to fold on to negative 1, right? So we do want to do that fold into the negative zone, like so. But then after we fold into the negative zone, we need to shift everything to the right um, by some number, right? We need to look at like the, the largest negative x, whatever it is. Um, whichever one that happens to be, find like the lowest x and add that number to all x's to, to shift everything back to the right so that everything is back to zero. Uh, well, how many dots are visible after completing just the first fold? So hold on. Do we need to actually correct for the negative can't we just keep those negative folds out there? Because we only really care about how many dots are visible. Uh, if we fold everything into the negative zone, will our math still work is the question. So let's pretend that this was like negative. Uh, this is zero over. Uh, this is zero, right? And so this is negative one. And let's say we fold on negative. Oh, no, because the next fold instruction is going to be relative to... Right? All right, your next fold instruction that comes in is going to be relative to zero, right? None of the folds are like, fold on negative three, right? <laughs> They're telling you to fold on the, the new coordinate. Um, okay, but we got our math, though. So we just need to and make sure, see if that's already in the, if it, you know, basically just look at everything on the right side of the fold. Um, see if it's already in the left half, right, at its modified coordinate. Is it always going to be a fold in half? I don't know. Maybe the input will be really easy for us. <laughs> But I got to account for the case that it's not a fold in half. Is it always half? It says half. If it's always going to be half folds, this is way easier than I'm making it out to be. But I'm going to handle the non half folds. Uh, right? I guess they're telling us here, because the first one's almost guaranteed to be a half fold, that our x is 655 times. Uh, 655 must be the middle. Right, and 447, I'm betting, is the middle also, just by the nice input rule. But yeah, take wherever the fold is, subtract your current location, your current x of each dot. Oh, if if the dot is less than the fold, don't 
mess, just skip it. And if the dot is greater than the fold, subtract from X, multiply by two, add it to the set, um, right? If it's less than the fold, just add it to the set. And that's it. Okay, so, phew, let's do that. So we don't need to set the dimensions. There's gonna be a set of dot locations like this, okay? Uh, and then we'll do a fold. Uh, let's do a fold X, num, okay. For location in self dot locations. Take the XY out of there. Uh, new set. Okay. Uh, actually, what we can do, we can keep using the, the same set, I believe. Uh, is it just remove to remove from a set? Python, I know add is to add to a set. Python set remove. It's, it is remove, okay. Let's just do a little terminal test. You know I love to do that. Uh, one, two, two, three. So add, let's add a four or five. Oh, A. S, S add, four, five. There we go. So S dot remove, one, two. Sure enough, it works. Okay. For location in self dot location. So let's do a copy here. We learned our lesson from, uh, you know, the other day, right? Uh, why are you complaining about this? Oh, we've got to put the self on fold X. That's why. That's why. Let's get out of here. Okay. Uh, so take the X, Y. Uh, if X is less than num, well, let's change this to fold point. If X is less than the fold point, right? Uh, well, just leave it leave it alone, right? We don't we don't need to do anything <laughs> for that one. Um, so we actually can only if we only need to do something if X is greater than the fold point, right? It's to the right of the fold. Uh, fold distance is equal to x minus fold point times two. Uh, and then what we want to do is we're going to do self dot uh, locations dot remove x, y, self dot locations. Oh, uh, new x equals x minus the fold. Distance dot add uh, new x y. There you go. And then for fold y, same thing only. Like that. So now we've got our two fold instructions. Great. Uh, and then we want to count uh, how many dots are visible.
There you go. It's that easy, right? However many locations there are is, is how many visible dots because of the, the, the property of the set being unique. If two dots happen to overlap, the other one will just get eliminated. And that's, that's that. Okay, so uh, we have our dot locations on our folds. We need to create a transparent paper. From the dot locations. And then we want to say uh, our first Let's do this. What do the folds look like again? All right, they're X's and Y's followed by a number. Um, we have fold X and we have fold Y. Let's do this, def uh, fold. Uh, the type and the point. Let's do that. Um, we could have used get adder here and set adder and whatnot to, to make this the same function and not do this kind of thing, but uh, that's fine. Instead of type, let's do um, dimension. Let's just make sure we're doing this correctly. Fold along Y. Ah. If you fold along y, oh no, fold along, yeah, fold along x equals 5 is an x comparison fold, yes. And fold along y is a y comparison fold. Okay, so we didn't, have, we don't have to, I thought it might have been reversed. Like, ah, oh, if you fold along the x, well, you're actually doing y's. But no, it's x, x, y, y, so that's fine. Uh, so the first fold. So on a paper fold, oh, first fold. Right. Actually, we can do paper dot fold uh, star like that. I think that'll work. Let's see what happens here. I know we're going to have errors, right? Yep. Forgot to change those. Three were given. I guess the star thing didn't work. Hmm. I guess that doesn't work. I can't use a starred expression here. I can do it here, maybe. Yeah. It should be two things. Oh, I see why. Oh, no, it's paper.fold. 
All right, let's give up on using the star. It's just causing trouble. Uh, dimension. I think that should have worked, though. Oh, we still are having trouble. Fold Y takes two position. Oh, I see what happened. The star was working. We just had some selfs in there for I don't know what reason. Uh, anyway. Set change size during iteration. Oh. So you iterate over a set. You can't modify that set in time while you're doing it. Okay, so we'll just have to do this. We don't need the remove anymore. Go. Okay, looks good, looks good. Let's try again. Okay. Uh, so, paper, paper.locations. Okay, so after the single fold, uh, there are 17, only 17 dots are visible after the first fold. Uh, which was a Y fold. And there should be a zero, zero in there. They're not sorted. Oh, there it is. This is zero, zero. Uh, and there should be a zero, one, two, uh, th a zero, three. Oh, it's a three. That's a, yeah, it's a zero, three. There's also a three, zero. One, zero, one, one, two, there's a three, zero. This seems correct. I don't want to make the function to print out the the thing, all right? Uh, okay. How many dots are visible after completing the first fold instruction of your transparent paper? All right, we'll switch to input.txt, and I bet we'll get the right answer. Part one result is equal to paper dot visible dots. We'll call it uh num or visible dot count. Uh just dot count. Okay. And so the answer should here be, uh, that's not right. <laughs> uh, that's not right at all. Why is it 653? Why is it, it said 17 a second ago. <laughs> it literally just said 17. Um, 
Turn the length of self dot locations. Yeah. It literally just said 17 when I was debugging. I guess it's gone now. All right, well, let's, uh, let's see what happened there. Oh, is it because I, sw I switched to input.txt? That was the right answer it was showing me. 17, yes. I'll take the breakpoint out. Get out of here. Stop it. 653. That's going to be the right answer. That's the right answer. Hopefully part two will be saved because we've already done it in part one. Okay, took a little break there, and let's read part two, finish folding the paper. We can do that. The code is always eight capital letters. What code do you use to activate the imaging camera system? Well, I guess we're going to have to print out and make, make the display. Uh, but we could, I guess, yeah, or we could use some sort of, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't want to, it'll be easier to make the display than it will be to... Um, write the code to like Trent to look at the points and you know figure out which letters they are. So <laughs> let's try to complete the folds and print out the answer. Okay, so to complete the folds, right? What we actually want to do is we want to reset the paper, and then we want to do uh four fold in folds paper dot fold star fold we'll do that okay so in part one we did the single fold now we've done all the folds um we're actually going to, have to change this a little bit to put our this done a new line We can actually can do this. Print part two. Then we're gonna print. Uh, pa uh, well, we'll just do paper dot display. Right. We'll make a function to just display. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's make our display function because I'm pretty sure our folds are gonna work. So we're going to go from, uh, oh, but we have to, we have to shift our negatives over, right? Um, so that's the first thing we have to do. Oh, do we really? Do we have to shift the negatives over? Let's let's print the display. Let's see what happens if we don't. I think <laughs> we might get lucky, but I think we're gonna have to shift them regardless. Uh, so we want the min x and the min y of the set. Uh, okay, so for and the max x and the max y. Uh, All x, x4, xy in self dot locations. We might have to implement the shift. Uh, all y. Uh, max x equals max all x 
min x equals min all x, max y equals max all y, min y equals min all y. Okay. And we'll do a double, a double loop. So for uh, x in range, min x, max x, for y in range, and we want to do y first. Okay. All right, let's just see let's just see what happens. I think it's not going to be right. Oh, we'll switch to our test input again. Stop it. Okay, uh, what was our error? Oh, we want to switch to test input. And what did it say about the test input? Oh, the test input is going to end up being a, a zero. We got to do plus one on the max for the range on the display. We get our zero. All right. Well, what if we do our real input? Is it going to work? We just I think it, we need we might need to shift. We might need the shift. We don't need the shift. Uh, there you go. It's hard to read that. Uh, L K R E B P R K L L K R E B P R K L K R E B L K R E B P R K And that's the right answer. All right, we will see you tomorrow.